Hello and welcome to the short tutorial. This tutorial is about how an LCD display is connected via E2C to an Arduino and then programmed in Simulink. So how this tutorial is to use MATLAB and Simulink and have a block that is able to send a number to this little display here. So in order to do this, I have created an example based on the example that was already in the library. And we check here what it is doing. It's an example how to connect and well, show a number on this screen. So uh, we have to use two libraries here. That's the wire.h library that's already uh, included in the Arduino. When you install the Arduino, you have about the version. I'm using here the version 233. So in this version it works and I've written down the number, no I didn't, uh, I used the actual number or the version of this library. So it works, you include the LCD library, the LCD I2C library from Frank de Babander, and then we initialize the LCD using this here, here you have to write down how many columns and rows your display has, mine has 16 rows and two, no 16 columns and two rows and then well you get into the setup um, this one is initial right now starting the the communication and then we turn on the backlight and then we picked we, we uh, write down a simple text first you always have to set the cursor in the right um, digit and then you print some some text so right um, in order to get this to work in Simulink, you first have to get a running example in Arduino so you know that all the wiring is correct, that Arduino understands what you want to do from, with it. And then you press compile here. I've connected an Arduino Uno to my COM5 display. And I think it's already done here. Oh, oh no, I have to press here, upload. So it's compiling, uploading, and then I can, we can see that in the screen here, it's showing what I showed you in the picture in the beginning. So, well, we have a working example, that's the first step. The second step is to prepare a folder. And that is very important. It gave me some, some uh, minutes of thought. We have to, use a folder here that has no um, no spaces in between all uh, the, the letters and so on have to be MATLAB and are compiler compatible so I use here D uh, temp underscore LCD so there has you have to use a folder to make it very simple with, where, where there are no spaces and stuff in it and well, this LCD Arduino is the example I showed you just in the which, which is in the background here and then I opened a folder here LCD MATLAB and this the next step is to get the libraries right and what you see here is that I've already um, copied my library in here so we use a library I, I've written it down here with lips and there you find the library I've copied over from the folder where the uh, Arduino libraries are in. And in, here in my computer, it's documents, Arduino, and then libraries. And then you scroll down to the correct library and then you copy the, the main stuff from it, this over to the other side. And I used the both files, copy those over. So MATLAB can use it in its own uh, folder. I'm sure you could also use this folder, but then you also have maybe path um, difficulties when there's a space included, you don't know what happens. So the safest way to do this is to have everything in one folder and to then to use it from here. Okay, the next step is to get MATLAB. I use MATLAB 2023B. And here we first start Simulink. The funny thing is here, you see it here, it's, it has detected the Arduino Uno, which is connected, and also asked me to install the MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware. This one we need in order to, well, to get it to work in Simulink, 
I have installed this already, so I don't know why it's asking me that. First, we create here a blank model. And that's where we are going to work. And first, we go to apps, which is kind of funny because, well, hold on a minute. Second, I explained it in a while. Here, you have to get the support packages. If you don't have it already, you go here to get hardware support packages. You, so you select which hardware you have you want to use, type in Arduino, and then you get the Arduino. Here, this Simulink support package for Arduino hardware. It's installed already. So, in order to get this to run, you start this page and then you click to Apps, Run on Hardware Board. So, the Simulink model knows that it wants to go to run on an Arduino Uno. So, we press Finish. And then it's setting up all the settings in the solver and hardware options. Takes a while. And then we are here. And then we can go again to apps. And what we are going to do is to use here this. Where is it? No, I got it wrong. Sorry. Here it is. We go to hardware. And in hardware, we find the IO device builder. And that's what it's what is leading or, or guiding us through the process. We are using this I.O. device builder and click next. And this asks, uh, it will ask us where to find everything. We select the D temp LCD. I will go one folder more into it. MATLAB, select, and then we add the folder which has all the lips in it. Okay, then we click Next. It asks us what files we want to use. We select all, since there are not so many in there, and we type uh, some, some name, LCD, it also. And we can add more text here. The first one has very specific, I don't know how many characters are allowed. Uh, show a number on the LCD liquid crystal display connected via I2C. We need no parameter because we don't want to set up any parameter. You can do that, all the people you will see this in a second. And then we click next. We select an output since we don't have an output other than the visual output. We can delete the output. And now we want to use one input. I will show, uh, use this example and um, select a number. Integer 8, that's good. And that's it. Then you can add a nice fancy image if you want, and you can make it fancy. We generate. And now we've done, we don't have, we didn't have to do so many things, but what's going to happen now is we have to include some C functions. Now you, what you see here is it's very basic, not so much included. So what we are going to do is we're going to put this one to and one to uh, next to each other, and then we copy all the stuff over here. So we are doing the same thing on the right and left side. We will initialize. Oh, let me copy all that in the setup function. So I think um, the C function is, or the MATLAB function is going to automatically generate some file like this on the on that side. Oh no, that was wrong. We have to good put this before here because it's kind of a global variable that is um, being set up. Then we're going to take that into here. So we have the setup, the same stuff in there, and then we take all that. But now it can't, now it's very important to see that here we have an int8 input. That is our input we just selected in the box. We have to get this input where now the, the number is in. And maybe we can want to show a text here. Okay. Maybe let's... Uh, and then we're going to print that number. We say print input and that's it. So it's going to get the number from 
our input in Simulink in a second, and then we're going to show this our number. Right? Uh, let me write this short so we have enough space for. for we only have 16 digits in on space. So we set the cursor to column zero, row zero, and then write number dot space, and then we then we're going to print our input. Let me check all that stuff here. And the setup function, yeah, that should actually save that. And then we open here the generated model. It should go get us into Simulink again. And what I am going to do, I have my untitled model here. We're going to copy that over. I close that. So right now we have our untitled model with the generated block uh, we just created. And we need one constant here. Constant. We want to... No, let's, uh, let's get some different stuff here. We, we want to have some, some number that is changing. So we see that the actual um, yes, data process is working. So we have here the some number we uh, sources sorry yeah, sources we take some here counter we take a counter which is limited so we have a yeah and then in order to get it correctly the data format correctly we select um, a data signal attributes we say convert so we want to convert the what, whatever number is get going in we want to convert it to the int eight which we set up and allowed in this C file. So we connect it here. Maybe we can show upper limit, I don't know. In the eight is able to show up to 255, so I'm from zero to 255, and that is about it. So that's it, we have a counter, a number, and we are throwing this in, and this should automatically show this on the um, display. Now we get to hardware and then we press build, deploy and start. So this one is going to compile all that, copy it over to the Arduino. We have to make sure that no serial monitor or anything is running, let's say here on the Arduino part, so we don't have to, uh, nothing is getting, getting disturbed or is blocking this serial port. Generating code completed. Now I hope that it's going to run correctly. Now it's still running, so we can still hope it works. And you see, you've seen that not many things. Yeah, it's running. I put it in the camera right away. It's running. It's not displaying the code as I wanted to, but I think we forgot to set the second cursor correctly, so here we see it's counting, and it's counting way faster than we can display. But you see that the way from sending a number, converting it, and putting it over to the LCD did work. Now we want to correct that. We set the cursor here correctly. Which one is this here? We have to, before we show the second line, we have to always forget which is the row number that is here. Row 2 is in, by, uh, in programming language row 1 because we start to count at 0. And that is still the right wrong place because we are before the input. We want to do this after that. So that is nice. We set it to 0 number. We throw out our number. Then we go into the second line which is row, is row 1 and we send a great day and that's our last test before we close that video build deploy and start again and you could also um, set up the, the rate which is counter is counting so we don't have it's not too fast for the for the display but that's all fine tuning which you can do on your own yes it's going so here have a great day I hope this one showed you that it's not hard at all and that we can get a number from the Simulink into 
LCD display over this I2C network. Have a great day.